Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on channel 12 News at 1. I am Yemi Dalimo. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Africa's largest oil company, has been unveiled with a mandate to achieve the desired energy security that will support sustainable growth of the nation's critical economic sectors. President Muhammadu Buhari, who performed the ceremony, looks forward to NNPC becoming a dynamic company of choice that will continue to deliver value to its stakeholders and global energy community. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. For the nation's petroleum industry, as President Muhammadu Buhari launches the rebirth of the NNPC Limited to deliver energy for today, energy for tomorrow. The landmark event in furtherance of the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act formally positioned the NNPC and the entire oil and gas industry on the path to sustainable growth, profitability and prosperity. NNPC Limited will operate as a commercial, independent and viable national oil company at far with its fears around the world to sustainably deliver value to its over 200 million shareholders and the global energy community while adhering to its fundamental corporate values of integrity, excellence and sustainability. Apart from being privileged to lead the creation of the NNPC 44 years ago, as the then Petroleum Minister, President Muhammad Buhari was also responsible for the signing of the PIA, heralding the long-awaited reforms of the oil and gas industry, including the rebirth of the NNPC. Both the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timepri Silva, and the Group Chief Executive Officer of the NNPC Limited, Mele Kolokiari, thanked President Buhari for his unparalleled leadership, steadfastness, and unalloyed support towards ensuring that Nigeria's oil and gas industry is on a sound footing. Before the coming into effect of the Petroleum Industry Act, leading to the rebirth of the NNPC, $50 billion worth of investment eluded Nigeria, but not anymore. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. A wired fraud suspect, Fatade Idugu or Lami Lekon, a suspect on wanted list of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, has been extradicted to the United States for allegedly stealing more than $3 million worth of equipment in various cities across the U.S. A statement by the head of media and public publicity of the EFCC says his extradition was coordinated by the Commission following a notice from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, for its role in impersonating in various cities, states, and academic institutions across the United States. Father Day was indicted by a grand jury on the Southern District of New York for offenses of wire fraud, in interstate transportation of stolen property, and identity theft. Upon its arrival in the United States, the suspect is billed to appear before a United States District Court. The Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the Central Bank of Nigeria has decided to raise monetary policy rate by 100% basic points from 13% to 14%. This was disclosed by the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, at the end of the fourth Monetary Policy Committee meeting for the year 2022. The committee retained the asymmetric corridor at plus 100 and minus, 70, minus 700 basic points around the MPR as well as cash reserve ratio at 27.5% and liquidity ratio at 30%. The Central, Bank of, the Central Bank Governor said the decision will help curtail inflation, urging the banking sector to continue to use their development finance tool to support the agricultural and manufacturing sectors to growth goods. First Public Relations Officer CSP Olumu Iwa Adijobi says the increasing rate of immorality, crime, wave, and other social vices among youths is worrisome and calls for urgent intervention by relevant stakeholders in securing the future of Nigerian youth. 
He stated this in Abelkuta Ogun State at a public lecture organized by the Federal College of Education, Ushele Abelkuta. Muiwa Omomu's report is here presented. Speaking on the topic insecurity and get rich quick syndrome, the implications for the Nigerian society. The first PRO decried the craze for wealth and material possessions among youth and called on relevant stakeholders to play their parts effectively in company dominance to evolve a better society. CSP Adijobi also stressed the need for Nigerians to be more committed to the affairs of God to have a crime-free society. We need to undergo certain transformations, starting from personal transformations that individuals in Nigeria must change their psyche towards security in Nigeria. They must see uh, assisting security agencies as a civic responsibility. Then structural transformation. We need to reveal our structures so that all of them can be functional and towards having good delivery in this country. The Provost Federal College of Education, Ushele, Dr. Rahim Shulaye, who commended various government interventions programs in addressing youth delinquency in Nigeria, called on government to empower the nation's institutions in checking youth immorality we need to look into what are the problems abound in our society, right? Not only in educational uh, no parlance, but generally. And we have discovered that uh, the issue of uh, insecurity is germane to expect our use that we produce. The first PRO, CSP, Ulumu Iwa Adijobi, was later recognized with an award of excellence in recognition of the unique role being played by the police in stemming the ties of insecurity in Nigeria. The state government has inaugurated a contributory pension scheme review committee and another committee to oversee consequential adjustment in pensions paid to retirees in the state. The state government also reiterated its commitment to solving all lingering issues related to deductions within the next few months, inaugurating a committee set up by the governor, Dakwa Abiodun, at the governor's office, okay, Mosso Abeokuta, the secretary to the state government, Mr. Tukumbo Talabi, said the two committees should be dispassionate and allow reason to prevail in their deliberations and submissions on the way forward for labor government relationship. The government team for the Contributive Pension Scheme Review Committee includes Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Alhaji Hazan Adekunle as chairman and the Director of Planning, Research and Statistics. State Pension Board, Mr. Babaji De Magjob, will act as secretary while the organized labor team is headed by the chairman of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Latisi Akim, and other labor leaders. No fewer than two persons have died in a crash involving two vehicles along Ijebu de Ogbere area Wednesday morning while two others were injured. One of the drivers of the two vehicles, Toyota Hyatt, with registration number LSD 304XD and Mercedes Benz truck AGB 174ZD, was accused of not using appropriate rules which led to the crash. A statement by the FRSC Public Relations Officer Florence Okwe says the injured victim were immediately taken to a private hospital for medical attention and corpses of the departed deposited at a mob at the same private hospital in Ijebu motion. The call advised motorists to be cautious while driving at night, avoid road violation and dangerous driving. The Nigerian Bar Association is raising an advocacy on ways of improving sports law and practice in Nigeria. The outgoing president of the largest bar in Africa, Onumide Akpata, commenced this position at the launch of a book on sport law and practice authored by a lecturer at the Nigerian Law School, Emmanuel. Sports law and practice is an area of law in Nigeria that is still evolving with scanty legislations. The law is what guides human interactions, otherwise anarchy sets in, resulting in mistrust. With the contractual agreements involved in sports, the sector is bound to evolve its own laws to ensure fair play. The development sport, the author, Dr. Emmanuel Oluwoloni, to write the 550-page book divided into seven parts with 22 chapters. The book is a pioneer effort on sports law and practice in Nigeria. We do have some sports law practitioners. We just need the material like this to galvanize that area. 
we must continue to do this because this is an area of law, like, like the governor said, that we can hand, we can hone our skills in. Right. To peruse this book before it goes to left for me, this book. And I don't think I have more to add than to adopt what the book reviewer has said. Some legal practitioners are of the view that the available legislations are not in tandem with recent global development. In part two, I examined the economic aspect of sport because all over the world today, the sport industry is contributing massively to the GNP and creating employment directly or indirectly in millions. This book has given a new impetus to the need to promote sports law and practice in Nigeria. The book stresses the need for sports tribunal to handle matters relating to sports activities in Nigeria. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. And that's the news for this hour. We thank you for watching. Join us 7 p.m. for more and comprehensive news. Good afternoon.